how many people are usually in these story meetings that you guys go in and do? It oh, just totally varies? Or yeah, it varies on the sequence, but it, you know, it could be 20 people or so. Do they, specifically those two, choose, I mean, is it just a coincidence that the first sequence you guys worked on was a pretty major part of the movie? It seems to me that it makes sense for, and I, I would imagine that they would do this, where they would pick something that's sort of the the kernel, the important mm -hmm. part of the movie that kind of holds the movie together, because right. it inspires the direct the um, the animators mm -hmm. once they've seen that that everything emotionally is kind of tied into this moment where she's turning into a frog, and it's like the start of the adventure. Do they always do that with their movies? Is that been the it, case with them? You're you're pretty much right on the money with that, and in that it's oftentimes it's it's a sequence um, that. Yeah, you know, establishes the characters, establishes maybe the theme of the movie. Uh, it, you know, it, it really kind of permeates a lot right. of things around it. The other thing, and, and it's seemingly, you know, kind of simple or pragmatic, but what's, you know, what sequence gets approved first into production? So, it's, oh. you know, it's it's combination of, of those two ideas. But who's but, approving the sequences? Well, we the the story is is generated, and then the, you know everything is subject to John Lasseter, you know, reviewing the reels as they go through, and he'll say, you know, uh, that looks good to me. I think this sequence is is ready to go into production, and, and you know, this one I've got some ideas or I've got some notes I want to give, so keep working on this one. But this one looks fine. So that's the one that that will get, you know, started into production, so. Yeah, but there's a, an awful happens. lot of big brains in there, all working, art, artists, but also big brains working together, and um, it's really smart. It, it's artist-centric to me, it seems like. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're, well, John Lester, I think, from the outside at least, he comes, comes off and everybody seems to think, and I believe it's true, that he's very, supportive of artists and, and, and of what their their creative process. So it seems like, and, and the same goes for Ron and John, and they, they seem to really focus on how can we get people so excited that they're going to give us their best work and be in flow and, you know, like have time. Because one of the things I talk a lot about with artists is when time stops and you're just you're just creating and it's like you don't even you're not barely even in your head right. it's just like the hand is just moving mm -hmm. you know does that seem to work more uh, be more the case with with those movies or do you just find an easy way to get into that place for yourself well I, you know again it, it will it will vary uh, from production to production but uh, you, but you're absolutely right in terms of, of Lassiter and, and the way Ron and John work in terms of uh, understanding they're, they're artist centric. So when I what I was directing on John Henry, the first thing that I think a successful director recognizes is the fact that they don't have all the answers. And what's yeah. the wonderful thing about being here is you've got this building that's just full of amazing talent, mm -hmm. amazing talent. And so, you know, big part of what a director does is is get that talent. And, and get them excited about the you know the project that you're you're trying to you know steer down the river mm -hmm. here, and and I think that you know John and Ron and John they all I think the better directors you know have have understood that, and again we learned that I think from the generation prior to us those are the kind of things that they they talked about, mm -hmm. and that yeah it's a very collaborative. The artists that I talked to have been working on specific movies. The ones that are really successful seem to be the ones where people had the most fun on. And it wasn't like, you know, it was successful so we had fun. It was like we had fun so it was successful. Exactly. You know, everybody was really feeling like a Mulan. When I talked to um, uh, Ruben Procopio, mm -hmm. he was talking about Mulan. He was talking about Beauty and the Beast. And um, that there was this spirit of just it was fun. Mm -hmm. And people were excited. And they felt trusted. Yeah. You know, and that, that's a really big part of a successful... Um, movie. I, as I think back to, you know, over the years and the films that I've worked on, I mean, various ones and probably the ones that were arguably the most successful were the ones that there was either something to prove as a, as a group, uh, Mulan and Case in Point. That was our first uh, feature film coming out of the Florida unit. Right. And I had been here uh, and then went down to Florida as kind of a uh, you know, 
part of a nucleus of, of experienced artists that helped you know build the you know the, the crew down there, and it was evident from right away from the beginning that you know we've got something really special here. We've got some amazingly talented people, fresh to the industry, fresh to animation that we had a chance to to teach and and kind of you know pass that legacy onto, and that we knew we could do a feature. We knew that that was our kind of the goal. We weren't just going to be doing sequences or uh, short films for the rest of our careers. We, we knew that we wanted to get in a place to do our own feature. Mm -hmm. So Mulan had that, that kind of drive and energy behind it. Uh, Great Mouse Detective was another one where it was caught in the middle of another transition here at the mm -hmm. studio. And well, we're not sure if we want to make animated films or not, but let's see what you guys have. And they looked at it and said, yeah, okay, you can go ahead and make it. So there was, again, there was this 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 drive of, you know, uh, somebody saying maybe you couldn't do it, and yet we're all going, we know we can do it. So there was that, you know, aspect. And it was a lot of fun. That was truly a, a really fun movie to work on. There are a lot of aspects to uh, 2D animation that I think afford the artists um, opportunities visually and in, in terms of storytelling that, in my opinion, no matter how advanced computers get, they're never going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, when I think about the challenge for this movie, Princess and the Frog, that's what needs to be shown, that here's what we can do that can't be done any other way. Mm -hmm. And even just the few scenes I've seen of the movie, it seems like, you know, it, it, is that, do you feel like that's what you're trying to say with that movie? Well, yeah, I mean, we have had been told, you know, or, you know, the, the impression was that nobody wants to see hand-drawn films anymore, that 3D has taken that over, it's just, mm -hmm. that's just the way it is, that's the way the world, get used to it. And a lot of us didn't feel that way. It's and a like lot of people Jello, I talked to. You know, Jello when they started, when they invented that, and they just pour water in, and that's what dessert is. Uh -huh. Very tasty. Yeah. And and awesome. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, old-fashioned girl, clearly, when it comes to animation. But you know, new stuff does not mean yeah. that traditional things aren't important and right. beautiful. But that was the perception value. we were fighting. That right. Was I'm the sure. Perception that that oh, that's all the audiences want to see. And I, you know, most of us here would have argued, no, the audiences just want to see a art. great story, great art, and told in a very entertaining way, whether it's hand drawn or not. And yeah. arguably, you know, we've you know missed the boat on a few few of our latter films, but you know, that's that's you just the way really it goes. You have to really feel supported though to make sure that it really oh, yeah. goes in that direction. And now right. I feel like there's we have a lot of new now. stuff happening here yeah. at Disney that's really making exactly. a difference. Exactly. Again, and John and Ed brought that support. Yeah. John particularly is our, our biggest uh, cheerleader in that because that's what, you know, again, he and I and Musker and, and, and Ron Clemens, that's what we've all, for our, people of our generation, that's what we were, you know, grew up on because we, we got to rub shoulders with you know, that first generation, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, there's, again, this unique, When you're talking yeah. about the first generation, you're talking about the nine old men, a few mm -hmm. of them were still working here. Right. Uh, when you first started working here, exactly. which is really like golden age, all just sort of trickling down into, right. and it's like the last opportunity to really learn from right. the geniuses that really started everything. And that's, that's the rich heritage that we were fortunate to have been, you know, they passed on to us and now I'm finding, you know, we're having to, you know, look ahead and, and think about passing that on to a exactly. new generation. So and, and stand for the people that aren't here anymore that mm -hmm. did do all that work. But it is all art ultimately on screen. It's mm -hmm. all art. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying you can't have watercolor when you have oil. It's mm -hmm. completely different. Exactly. So, or um, photography versus uh, versus say an oil painting. Exactly. You could have your picture Very taken. Different. Or you could sit for a portrait, and you have two completely different results, equally valid, but they, you know, aesthetically different. 